Let's talk about voltage-gated potassium channels. In a previous video, I talked about the activation cycle of voltage-gated sodium channels, how they're able to proceed from the closed to open to the inactivated state back to the closed state, and talked about the various factors that are involved in those transitions. For this video, I'm gonna talk about voltage-gated potassium channels. Keeping in mind that there's a vast array of potassium channels belonging to the voltage-gated potassium channel family, uh, the one I'm going to focus on are the potassium channels that are classically associated with uh, the neuronal action potential. And probably the easiest way to, uh, to discuss these is to talk about them in relation to the structure and function of the voltage-gated sodium channels I covered earlier. So if you're not familiar with voltage-gated sodium channels or you haven't seen the video that I put together before, might be a good idea to follow the link and check that out first. So voltage-gated potassium channels share a number of structural similarities as to the voltage-gated sodium channel counterparts I discussed earlier. Just to go over these quickly, voltage-gated potassium channels are comprised of four subunits where each subunit has a pore forming domain and the voltage sensor domain. So for the pore forming domain, a couple of important features is it has the selectivity filter, which helps impart a high degree of selectivity for potassium ion. It's also in the pore forming domain where the voltage gate is located. And just like in the voltage gated sodium channels, the opening and the closing of the voltage gate is coupled to the position of the voltage sensor out here in the voltage sensor domain. One important structural and functional difference that these potassium channels have relative to the sodium channels is they lack an inactivation gate. Because they lack this inactivation gate, their activation cycle is a little simpler. First of all, the voltage-gated potassium channels exist in either the closed state or the open state. The potassium channels are in the closed state when the membrane potential is relatively negative. This pulls those voltage sensors, the positively charged voltage sensors out in the voltage sensor domain inward towards the inner leaf of the lipid bilayer. This causes the voltage gate to be in the closed position, which occludes movement of potassium down its electrochemical gradient, typically from inside the cell to outside the cell. When the membrane potential depolarizes, this allows the voltage sensors to relax upward, leading to the opening of the voltage gate, which allows for potassium efflux. For the channels to return to the closed state, this requires membrane repolarization. This membrane repolarization is often accomplished by the activation of these voltage-gated potassium channels. In other words, when these potassium channels open, leading to that outward potassium movement, that's typically what causes the membrane repolarization as the positive charge is leaving the cell, making it inside negative. This causes the voltage sensors to be pulled back inward towards the inner leaf of the membrane, and the voltage gate slams shut. One important feature for this activation cycle is that the transition between the closed and open state and back to the closed state for these voltage-gated potassium channels is relatively slow. Another name for these channels are delayed rectifier potassium channels. So this is in contrast to the voltage-gated sodium channels. When a membrane depolarization occurs that leads to channel opening of the voltage-gated sodium channels, the voltage sensor moves outwards and the voltage gate opens relatively quickly. In contrast, for these voltage-gated potassium channels, when membrane depolarization occurs, it takes a few milliseconds or so for the potassium channels to ultimately respond and achieve their highest level of open probability given the magnitude of the membrane depolarization. And just like they are slow to open, they also tend to be slow to close. When the membrane potential is repolarized, you tend to see a persistent potassium current from these voltage-gated potassium channels. This persistent potassium current can lead to a prolonged membrane hyperpolarization, which is often observed during the latter stages of the action potential.